Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome one of the very, very tall leaders from the world of information technology from India, Dr. Ajay Chowdhury. Ajay, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chowdhury is the founder of HCL. He's the chairman of the EPIC or the Epic Foundation. He's one of the pioneers of the Indian IT industry. He's been honored with the award of, with, of Padma Bhushan. And those of you who do not know Padma Bhushan, it's the second highest uh, award in India. He's been recognized, awarded, and felicitated several times. And when I was reading about him, I was amazed and delighted to learn that he and I are both fans of the evergreen actor Devanand. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, I've always believed the moment I see Devanand, you know, I used to go and see him in theaters, that the moment I saw him, my ticket was, uh, the money for my ticket had been re recovered, and after that was all profit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so Ajay, let's start talking about HCL. Uh, let's start by asking you, what were some of your key challenges as you built HCL into a global powerhouse? Well, I go back to 1989, 1979, 80, hmm. when we first set foot on Singapore. Hmm. And I think you were there at the same time, yeah. if I recall. Hmm. Hmm. So, 79, 80, nobody had ventured out of the country, no oh. IT company. Correct. And uh, we were crazy enough to venture out into Singapore to set up a hardware company. Hmm. And uh, the EDB invited us and said, look, we are starting a very major program in electronics hmm. and we would love to have a, a computer manufacturer there. Hmm. So, you know, three of us just got onto a plane and we had very little money because those days RBI didn't allow you to take yep. any great shake money out of India. Hmm. And uh, uh, we just landed up there and said, let's get going. But hmm. before that, we did some bit of market research, which hmm. told us what should be the positioning of the company. Correct. And clearly, the, the positioning told us that if we went to sell computers, we won't succeed. Hmm. So we changed the whole rules of the game. And hmm. we said, we only sell computerization and we don't sell computers. Okay, And that was our first campaign that we ran full page in Straits Times in Singapore, hmm. where we said computers, not just compu uh, computerization, not just computers. Hmm. I remember and we that. had a lot of stuff hmm. to back it up. Hmm. And we set up a software factory in Madras, which was again the first in the country. Hmm. And we used to actually uh, develop software in, in, in Chennai. Mm. And then ship it to Singapore through Korea. Mm. And lots and lots of times those floppies those days were there. They used to get spoiled in mm. the customs. Mm. But never mind. We succeeded. And in the first six months, I think we sold a million dollars worth of uh, okay. uh, computerization. Mm. Mm. And which was our target. So we met our target in six months. Mm. And But what we saw as a challenge when we were starting out is that when we went to meet customers in Singapore, Hmm. Their impression of an Indian was a corner shop wall. Hmm. That fellow in the corner who sells Kirana. Hmm. And that's the way they used to think. Correct. About us. So the positioning was just not existing. Yep. So we had to really uh, create positioning for India, create positioning for HCL. Hmm. And that was quite a struggle in the beginning. Hmm. But we overcame that and uh, succeeded over the years in Singapore. And then we expanded to China and other countries uh, from there. And in about uh, six, eight years, we had done large system integration deals out of China and other locations. So mm -hmm. that's the way, you know, you had to face that kind of situation in those early days. Mm -hmm. And when you say that you had to go through a process of educating the consumer, what were some of the challenges that you saw in trying to convince people that India was on the path to becoming a major technology uh, country? In those days, nobody recognized India as a correct. But interestingly, India at that time was ahead of Singapore. 1980 when we went. In about 10 years, Singapore went ahead of India. Mm. So we went there and said, look guys, we are one of the largest companies out of India. Mm. And we are number one in India. We would, we would like to be uh, telling you what to do with technology. Mm. And mm. that's how we succeeded over a period of time. Mm. So the positioning, the branding, all of that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So when we went there, we said, we are not going to spare the money in hiring the best in terms of advertising and PR. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So we hired OM for advertising and we hired Burson Mustella for PR. Mm. And that's how we really did the positioning act right up front. Mm. And then we started to meet various people in the government to tell them how how what we can do how we can do what we can do different from what others have been doing in singapore mm. and that's how we went about uh, creating our brand there mm. very interesting so you know again when i was reading about you uh, and i was looking at some of uh, your articles it is very clear that your dream has been to see india as a top electronics producer i mean given the fact that you started it in 1980 which was probably before anyone could even think about it 76 76 okay 76. Uh, so let me start by asking you what is needed to achieve your dream well actually uh, for the last 30 40 years uh, i have spent a huge amount of time mm. in convincing the indian government mm. that hardware is as important as software correct <clears throat> what people do not know mm. is pretty much all of software companies that started mm. started originally with hardware mm. and when we took uh, hcl for setting up a manufacturing plant in the us in 89 mm-hmm. again we took hardware there not software mm. and we got lots of orders we failed due to certain other reasons but that's the time when we actually made the switch from hardware to software Mm. and why did it happen it happened because a lot of the hardware companies in india especially mm. hcl we were absolutely fantastic in terms of our operating system knowledge correct so we had adopted unix in india mm. and we we had done so much work on unix that mm. we were far ahead of the us mm. and when we landed up in 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 the us those guys were surprised that we had done so much so much work mm. on 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 uh, unix mm. and as a matter of fact when our hardware unit did not take off due to certain reasons mm. our engineers went went and sat in the, inside the r&ds of companies like hp mm. and they actually have patents for some pieces of the technology mm. which we created, our people created so mm. it all started from hardware and went off to software Hmm. DCS was also a Burroughs company. Correct. Originally. Yeah. Right. Tata hmm. Burroughs. You know, so a lot of these companies that were software, like Wipro, they were also a hardware company. Hmm. Hmm. Only Infosys, but Infosys also had some hardware linkage through Patna. Correct. Because they used to sell di- digital. Hmm. So a lot of people don't know that everything came out of hardware, hmm. then yeah. became software. Hmm. Now, if we look at going forward. Hmm. what have we done wrong and what have we done right as a correct about 20 25 years ago when software really took off mm. the government started saying we don't need to worry about hardware anymore mm-hmm. yeah we are doing so well in software why should we you know waste our time mm. but i went about convincing the government and saying mm. don't make that mistake because hardware and software are two sides of the same coin correct and you are going to not succeed hmm. unless you look at hardware hmm. so anyway it didn't happen i wrote many reports for the government i i i made a line which was very successfully used by every minister hmm. which said our electronic import will be will will, will be higher than the oil bill hmm. and everybody used it but hmm. they did nothing about it hmm. so about 5 to 7 years ago things started to change correct and the government started listening hmm. and slowly 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 we came up with policies which actually were very uh, positive towards hardware hmm. now look at the geopolitical situation today hmm. the geopolitical situation is that you have the ukraine war you had covid and you had zero covid policy in china correct all these three things pointed towards the fact that you need more resilience in your supply chain hmm. and that change is a very critical change for india to seize upon mm. for many years people have talked about china plus one mm. vietnam went and seized that and mm. created a fantastic manufacturing capability in electronics mm. but we didn't do that we kept talking did nothing now what the situation is that as everybody is thinking that look till yesterday people went to china mm. they got a product designed mm. they got it manufactured Mm. they brought it back to their country and labeled it as avels or usha Correct. or electric house or whatever mm. and they sold it to the world mm. i think that opportunity exists for india today mm. 
and that's why i very strongly believe that india as a product nation is our next step next and we step. must seize on that opportunity mm. and what are our benefits against a uh, vietnam mm. we are a, we have great design capability mm. and engineering capability yeah. which vietnam does not have correct if we put manufacturing plus design plus engineering mm. i think we can easily replace china mm. in at least 10% or 20% of the product business that they do for the world mm -hmm. and what is the role a big domestic market will play in india to support domestic manufacture of electronics ah very important question because this is something that we have been telling the government again for a while mm -hmm. we said do something called demand aggregation mm -hmm. that is the government is the largest buyer of it correct if they can do demand aggregation and give it to domestic players who mm. design and manufacture in india mm. then they will have the initial leg up mm. on volume correct and once they have the volume they can actually create uh, technologies and pricing which is which can be sold all over the world mm. now i'll give you a one, uh, one example happening just now right the government has decided to give the 4g uh, piece of bsnl Hmm. Two tatas. Hmm. It's a fourteen thousand crore business. Correct. The Tata team that is working on it, I talked to them and I said, "Look, you guys have got a fourteen thousand crore business, hmm. but uh, if you want to be successful in future, you have to compete with the Nokia's and the Ericsons." Hmm. And they said that order has made it easier for us. Wow! Because with that order, we are able to buy components which are. at the same price as nokia and uh, mm. ericsson mm. so that's what demand aggregation does so we are actually proposing through epic that every state does demand aggregation so for example up mm. mm. up wants to buy two crore tablets we are telling them that why the hell are you not looking at buying from an indian company who designs and manufactures Correct. in your state yeah and you do the demand aggregation even if you get 50% of that business mm. one crore is a huge number mm. so that's really what we are after fascinating creating demand mm. aggregation mm. and interestingly government policy supports it today mm. so the government has a demand aggregation policy in its semiconductor mm. policy mm. as well as preferential market access for india designed products and india value addition products mm. they don't apply it well enough Hmm. Fascinating. So you know what you're saying makes so much sense because I remember I spent after ITC I spent eight years in aerospace running Asia for two major American companies, and they used to survive on government orders and then be able to do a lot of other things. So what exactly. you're saying makes abundant sense, and I sincerely hope it happens. You know something very interesting is happening hmm. because of the large domestic market. Hmm. Do you know that India is the second largest wearable? India has the second largest wearables brand in the world. Wow! Okay. Boat. Boat. I Boat know. came up five years ago. Mm. Out of the blue. Mm. After Apple, they are number two in the world. Wow! Why? Wow. Because the India market is so huge. Mm. So you take advantage of the India market. Mm. Unlike what Vietnam can do, mm. if we design and manufacture in India for the Indian market, we have large volume, mm. even in the consumer space, mm. and you can succeed. well said but tell me uh, ajay one is the market one is the technology how it, are we as far as infrastructure is concerned in different states to be able to handle a delicate product like electronics ah you hit the nail absolutely on the head mm -hmm. i have been telling the government for a while that our logistics is absolutely pathetic mm -hmm. logistics does not support electronics correct electronics means very quick movement mm. from a to b to c mm. you need transshipments in india mm. those kind of logistics capability does not exist in india mm. but with the new logistics policy and the gati shakti that's been announced mm. i have great hopes that these kind of things will be taken care of mm. what i am telling government is that create clusters which are and beautifully connected to airports and ports hmm. so if let's say up decides to do it they are setting up this jaiwar airport hmm. around that if you they set up a very large electronics capability which they are planning hmm. then if you manufacture there you want to import components you want to export products it's very quick hmm. 
but they need to also work on the customs part of it where import does not take more than half an hour in mm. half an hour you clear your component make the product and next day it ships mm. that's the kind of capability you need which mm. vietnam has created correct vietnam haiphong port directly connects to uh, 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 one of the major cities in china mm. 12 hour trip you can get components from there. wow the other part of uh, electronics manufacturing is the chips oh. the chip manufacture and i remember you know uh, there used to be one chip manufacturing plant in the in chandigarh uh, i think i forget i think scl or something semiconductor complex a semiconductor complex and then we suddenly had this complete uh, uh, move to china i'm now been reading that there's a lot of electronics manufactured through for chips that are coming back to to india I'd love to get your perspective on that. Well, again, I've been writing about doing semiconductors since two thousand nine, mm. and I saw this problem many, many years ago. Okay. And I told the government, "Look, watch out! If you don't do semiconductors, mm. you won't succeed." Correct. Everybody in India and everybody's uncle and aunt used to come and tell the government, "Let's do fabless companies out of India, which <laughs> will design the chips, mm. but don't make it in India because it's too expensive." Mm. i never believed in it because i said look some day you will realize what happens mm. and we realized during covid when we fell short of semiconductors in india in a big big way mm. and close to 250 companies uh, industries were impacted mm. so the impact of semiconductors is phenomenal mm. and the earlier uh, 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 senate head in uh, for intelligence in america Ben Sasse, he made a statement about four or five years ago. If I recall, mm. he said the next war will be fought with semiconductors. Wow! So that's the importance of semiconductors. So mm. good news is that in the last two years, huge movement mm. uh, in India semiconductor mission has been set up. I am an advisor to India semiconductor mission. Mm. Uh, they've created a ten billion dollar, uh, you know, plan. to give benefits to people who come and set up in india mm. which is the largest in the world mm. so if you want to come and set up a semiconductor plant in india you get 50% of the investment done by the government okay. central government mm. state governments are also getting so excited that some of the state governments are putting another 20% wow so just imagine if you have a 5 billion dollar plant you want to set up mm. 70% that is 3.5 billion mm. will get paid for So you will have to just spend 1.5 billion to set up. Mm. So mm. these are the kind of benefits that are coming up now, and I think uh, if our biggest challenge in this country has been that we make great policies, mm. but we don't market them good well enough. Well said. Well said. Well we said. completely miss out on that, mm. and that is still a lacuna in the country. Mm. So, uh, Ajay, one more question on related to electronics manufacturing. Then I want to move to the Epic Foundation. You know, we are already big manufacturers of computers. We are probably, I think, the one of the biggest for telephones. Yeah. What are some of the other major electronic sectors that India can focus on? I mean, I I keep reading about electronic vehicles, for example. But I'd love to get your thoughts. You see, uh, mobile phones. We are the second largest manufacturer in the world. It's happened in just three to four years. Correct. It's a great story. Mm. but behind that story also rise a problem we don't do any much value addition in it mm. okay that is something we must change so we must design mobile mm. phones in india and then manufacture I then we'll have higher value addition mm. Mm. but let's leave that aside the opportunity for us is in literally every part of electronics you tell me which product doesn't have it mm. i can't name it okay maybe toothbrush mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's what it's all about so right. fundamentally we need to be making electronic products so i have given a proposal to the government recently mm. but i have said let's work towards making india a product nation in electronics mm. and let us identify 500 products mm. which we want to make in india mm. and then put incentives around it and put strategies around it where startups and medium sized companies large companies can all participate mm. and make these products in india yes. Amazing. if these are designed in india then we can manufacture in india and that's really my dream that if we can do something like this it will be 
make us extremely competitive and will be a terrific alternate source to China. Amazing. Well said. So, Ajay, now let me move to the Epic Foundation. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about this foundation and what was some of your what was your vision to set this up? Well, we were looking at what was happening in the last 8 to 10 years. Hmm. Till 10 years ago, there were 15 years ago, maybe there were electronic brands in India. Hmm. You had all kinds of brands in right. television. You had brands like Micromax and Lava hmm. and phones. Hmm. You had a lot, lot of Indian brands. Suddenly, in the last 10 to 15 years, hmm. all those brands vanished. Hmm. And the Chinese took over. And I started talking about it a couple of years ago and I said, India has become a colony of China. Hmm. Because fundamentally, we've opened up our whole market to the Chinese. Correct. And we're getting nothing in return. Hmm. What are we getting? Yes, we manufacture mobile phones in India, but we don't do any value addition. Hmm. So, what are we really trying to do? Hmm. <coughs> so, through Epic, we brought together a few people. Me, Arjun Malhotra, whom you know from yeah. MCR, Dr. Satya Gupta, who's a very well-known uh, guy in the semiconductor area. You mm. used to work for Intel. Mm. And then we set up a board, mm. which consists of all of us, plus a uh, uh, gentleman who heads the Manufacturers Association of Information Technology, mm-hmm. and Professor Karandikar from IIT Khan. Okay. He's again a telecom and semiconductor guy. Mm. So we said, this will be a board. And then we set up a, uh, you know, uh, uh, advisory board, which is a global advisory board. Mm. And we said our objective should be that we must convert India to a product nation. Mm. And so we have started to work on ourselves investing in creating some technologies. Mm. So the first two products that we identified were a tablet for education Mm -hmm. and a chip for the LED business. Okay. So the LEDs that are made in India Mm. The 100 crore LEDs we make every year. Mm. And the chip that goes into it for driving the LED is single sourced from China. Okay. So we went to the association and we went to the, some of the large manufacturers like mm. Philips and Dixon and all these guys. And he says, you guys are, you know, importing this. During COVID times, the price went up thrice mm. because there was single supplier. Mm. So we went to them and said, why can't we do demand aggregation? Mm. Why can't all the uh, manufacturers join up mm. and give us the des- give us a, 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 you know capability to design and manufacture it? Mm. We have been successful. Okay. So at this right at this moment, the design is going on for the chip. Mm. In about three months, the design will be done. Mm. Tape out will happen in June, and by about October November, we should have the first lot of wafers coming out. Wafers today can't be made in India because that capability does not exist. Mm. We wanted government to upgrade the semiconductor complex, but they did not agree. Mm. So we went to a Taiwanese company and they are giving the wafers and they found an Indian company called Sahastra Semiconductors. Mm -hmm. They have set up a plant to package the chips. Okay. So we'll do the design and packaging in India. Mm. Wafer will come from outside, Mm. but hopefully in the next two to three years, when wafer capability happens in India, we'll have the whole thing made in India. Amazing. So that's part one of LED. That's mm. successful. Mm. We've also launched our tablet in India. So we've designed this tablet through a design company in India and mm. manufacturing it in India. But the differentiation we are making mm. is that in education, when people buy tablets, mm. they can't afford to throw them away. Mm. Because students can easily use the same tablet for right. Absolutely. So we decided to make it different and we are we made it upgradable and repaired. Mm. So that people can own the product for six years mm. instead of throwing it off after two years. Because if you pick up a typical tablet, there's not even a screw at the back. Mm. You can't open it. Correct. <coughs> you know, when I was also reading about you on this website, what Epic is doing, it was fascinating to see about your R3 strategy, which was reuse, repair, and recycle. And I assumed that is because of this huge electronics waste that is likely to come out. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? We are the second largest e-waste country in the world. Okay. And it's becoming bigger and bigger problem mm-hmm. because I talked to you about wearables and hearables. Yeah. And 
these products, little, little products, people use for three months and throw them away. Mm. So this is just creating a massive problem of e-waste in the country. Mm. So what we did was that, interestingly, the government, through its consumer affairs ministry, mm. they came up with this whole idea that India should also adopt a right to repair policy. Okay. So we went and talked to them. And we influenced them to create this box. Hmm. So they said, what should we do? We said, you tell us. They said, okay, you write a report for us, but do it pro bono. Hmm. We can't afford, we can't afford to pay you. Hmm. We said, okay, we'll write the report pro bono. Hmm. So we wrote the whole report. It's about 150 page report. We've given them all the global uh, strategies and suggested an India strategy. Hmm. And we said, let's go and implement this. Hmm. So right to repair policy is going to happen in India in the next 12 months mm. and it will create phenomenal amount of jobs because Correct. if every product is repairable in India mm. then, then look at the number of people who can repair products all over the country. It's been mm. So that's part one of the whole strategy. Mm. The part two of the strategy was let's standardize the uh, USB-C as a standard for all products. Right. So again we participated in that and the government has now announced a policy that by 2024 December, everybody has to have USB-C as a standard right. of all products. Right. We are now working on the next part of that strategy. I'm part of the committee for wearables and wearables, mm. where again, we want to bring USB-C as a standard. Amazing. So these are the kind of things you have to do to make e-waste uh, uh, manageable. The other interesting part that most people don't know is that there are some very interesting companies in India mm. who are extracting lithium from uh, e-waste. Okay. Mm. And India doesn't have any lithium mm. deposit at all. Mm. But this company's technology, we can be a 10% to 20% lithium supplier to the world. Wow. So it's astonishing what you can do with technology. Incredible. Thank you. So I've got time for one more question, Ajay. And this is for the thousands of people who will listen to your words of wisdom. Uh, based on your own amazing journey, and you've achieved so much in your life, what would you say are three lessons or three learnings you want a lot of our young people to take away? Well, I think the first learning that I would like to talk about is that people always have had this whole thinking, old thinking, that you need to be looking at only one area in life. Mm. So if you are a mechanical engineer, you look at mechanical engineering, mm. nothing. Mm. I have a very different view. Mm. I view that you should have a range of things that you should Yeah. Do. And if you have that range, then you have a worldview. Correct. And that, I think, is very critical for success. I Correct. did that with great success within my company yeah. and within IIT Hyderabad, where I was the founder chairman. Mm. I started an entrepreneurship program in IIT Hyderabad, when mm. it's the only IIT that has it. Mm. So range, I think, is a very important issue. Absolutely. The other very critical issue is that you should have certain skills mm. which are important. Yeah. And one of the life skills I believe in mm. is salesmanship. Okay. Sorry, is what? I can get that word. Salesmanship. Sales. Sales. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you want to be a successful CEO of a startup, mm. if you don't know how to sell, mm. forget it. You'll never make it. Well said. So you have to have great salesman capabilities. Mm. And last and but not the least is managing people at the mm. end of the day. Yeah. How well you can manage people mm. and how you can get the best out of ordinary people. Mm. You know, a lot of people say you have to hire the most sexy guys in the world, the most intelligent guys in the world. Mm. I have a great difference, difference from that. Mm. When I ran the hardware business, I could not afford to hire the most smartest guys in the world. Mm. I had to hire people whom I could afford because my mm. margins were so low. Correct. But I, let me tell you one thing. Every year in the last 10 years of my run as mm. head of HCL Infosystems, we were number one in uh, employee satisfaction. Amazing. Amazing. And why did that happen? Because we had a deep linkage to our people. Mm. And we created these very ordinary people to be great people. And that's what delivered results. So you can get great results from 
the you know iit mba type of people but can you get results from a diploma engineer mm. well that's said. what we did with great success well said and on that note ajay and your three amazing lessons we need to change our thinking because we can do many things in life and therefore we need to get a world view second you said was we need to develop skills that are important and one of them you outlined was be a good salesperson i think we need to be a good salesperson and third one you said was managing people is very very critical you know and managing people who have the capability of being able to deliver what you want but not necessarily the most expensive people Correct. thank you ajay for speaking to me about your incredible journey thank you for talking to me about what went into building hcl uh, into what it is today and it is one of the two or three top uh, companies from india thank you also for talking to me about your dream and it, you articulated it so well i'm sure my viewers and listeners would love to uh every single point you made about making india into a powerful electronics product nation and finally thank you for speaking to me of the epic foundation and all the amazing work that you're doing thank you again and good luck thank you ashutosh it was great talking to you thank you thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.